everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. It's spring, at least it is in theory, <laughs> but we're still waiting for Mother Nature to start decorating. So while we're waiting, we thought we'd do a little spring decorating of our own. And this week, we're going to show you how to make my spring flower table runner. This table runner measures approximately 80 by 27 centimeters, or 31 by 10 and a half inches. I've made mine using lightweight size 3 yarn in acrylic. But if your table runner is going to come into contact with any hot dishes, then I recommend using a lightweight yarn in a natural fiber, like cotton or wool, to avoid any possibility of melting. Since this table runner is made using a repeating motif, you might want to consider, once you've finished the table runner, making a few extra motifs to use as matching coasters or doilies. If you are new, to working with repeating motifs or join-as-you-go construction, then this project might look a little daunting. But don't worry, I'm going to take you through it row by row, stitch by stitch, just like I always do. So, let's grab our lightweight yarn, grab our hooks, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up some spring together. In order to make our spring flower table runner, you want around 150 grams of soft yellow and around 100 grams of soft green. These are both a lightweight acrylic yarn. If your table runner is going to come into contact with something hot, I recommend using cotton rather than acrylic. You also need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter or an I9. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to build 12 motifs in all, and after the first one, we will be joining them all together as we go. But they all start the same way, rows 1 through 3 will always be identical. So this is your very first motif. You're going to begin with your green, you're going to make a little slip knot, you're going to chain 5, And then you're going to join with a slip stitch to your first chain to make a ring. And it should just barely fit over the edge of your finger. We're going to chain one to begin row one. And into that little ring, make sure you keep your fingers in it so that you don't get confused, you're going to work eight single crochet into that ring. So eight single crochet into your ring. Once you have eight single crochet in that little ring, join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made, and that is the very center of your flower finished. On to row two, we're going to chain three. This chain three counts as a double crochet, and into the same stitch that you chain three out of, that little space right there, you're going to work another double crochet. Chain two, work two double crochet into the next stitch, and you're going to repeat this all the way around. Two double crochet into each stitch with two chains in between. So two double crochet, chain two, next stitch, two double crochet, chain two, next stitch, two double crochet, chain two, and so on. You will have eight sets of double crochets all the way around row two when you're finished. Once you've got eight sets of two double crochet each, or 16 double crochet, you're going to skip over that false stitch, make sure you've chained your last two, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that we began row two with. And that is the green center of our flower finished. You can grab your scissors, snip your yarn, and fasten off. Take a moment to weave in your little tail. Now that we're done with our green, we're going to join our yellow. So grab your yellow yarn, make a little slip knot, and you can join your yellow in any chain two space anywhere around your little center here. So any chain two space, join with a slip stitch. We're going to chain six to begin. This chain six counts as a double crochet, chain three into that same chain two space, you're going to work a double crochet. Then 
you're just going to work a v-stitch into every single chain two space around so make sure you jump over top of your two double crochets together find the next chain two space and you're going to work double crochet chain three double crochet all into the same chain two space and that's your little v-stitch a double crochet chain three double crochet all worked into the same space find the next space work double crochet chain three double crochet into it repeat that all the way around and you should have eight v-stitches at the end of row three at the end of row three you should have eight v-stitches and they are these things you can tell that they're the double crochet, chain three, double crochet that comes out of every chain two space. So don't be confused by the spaces in between them. Once you've completed your last V-stitch, you're going to find the third chain of your chain three that you started with, and you're going to join with a slip stitch to that stitch or that chain to close off row three. Row four, we're going to slip stitch into the chain three space, so into the space that sits in the middle of our v-stitch to start, chain one, and into every single chain three space we're going to work the following. Half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, so that's two wraps around your hook to start, pick up a loop, wrap back through two, wrap back through two, wrap back through two, that's a treble double crochet and half double crochet. So into every chain three space you're going to work half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. You're going to reach down into that space that sits between v-stitches, so right into the space, and you're going to single crochet. That brings you to the next chain three space, sort of the middle of that v-stitch, and you're going to work half, double, treble, double, and half. Find the space between v-stitches, reach down into it, and single crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row four. Once you've worked all those stitches into your last chain three space, you get to the last space between v-stitches, reach down, single crochet, don't miss it, and then you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet you made. And you should have eight petals all the way around your flower. Now rows one through four are exactly the same for every single motif. And there really isn't much variation in the last row of each motif, it's just in how we attach them. But since this is the first motif we're making, it's a complete and single entity, it doesn't have to be attached to anything yet. This is how we finish off row five. We've already slip stitched to join for our last row, so we're going to continue slip stitching from this point. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, and then the next slip stitch is the top of the chain, or I should say the top of the treble crochet from the previous row. So it'll be the middle stitch of that little petal. It's the tallest stitch, the one right in the middle. You're going to chain three, and you're going to slip stitch back into that same stitch. So that little pico will sit on top of the treble crochet. You want to make sure that you have a treble crochet pico, a little pico sitting on top of your treble crochet, all the way around. And then all you have to do is just slip stitch, Try to keep your slip stitches nice and loose. You're going to slip stitch into every single stitch all the way up to the next treble crochet from the previous row. And you can sort of tell that you're there because you've just gotten to the top of the, the peak of that cute little petal. Once you slip stitch into it, chain three. Slip stitch back into the same stitch, which is at the top of that treble crochet. And then just keep on slip stitching. Take your time. Don't make these very tight because you don't want to tighten up your uh, petals. You want your flower to lie nice and flat. So go ahead, repeat that all the way around, and I'll catch up with you at the end. Once you've slip stitched into the last stitch, you're going to slip stitch into the actual slip stitch that began this row, which is technically the slip stitch that joined the previous row. 
And that's it. You can snip your yarn and fasten off. Take a moment to weave in your tail and that is the first motif of our entire pretty little table runner made. Now you're going to repeat rows 1 through 4 for exactly the same way. So rows 1 and 2 are in green and rows 3 and 4 are in yellow. And when you get to the end of row 4 in your second motif, come on back and I'll show you how to join them as we go. In order to join up all the motifs in the first column of our table runner, and of course our table runner has two columns in it, each column has six motifs. So this is the first one, it's the very first motif and it's made completely on its own. Then you want to work rows one through four on your next motif. When you get to the end of row four, you slip stitch to join in that first half double crochet. And you begin row five, just like you did the last one, you start slip stitching up to the top of your first treble crochet from the row previous. You're going to chain one, and now you're going to pick up the previous motif. So this will be motif B. The motif you're working on will always be motif A, and the one that you're directly attaching to is B, and then later on when we're in column two, you'll have B and C. But don't worry, it might sound complicated, it's not. So you slip stitch into the top of that previous treble crochet, chain one, grab the next motif, make sure it's facing upright, grab any old peak, so find the little peak which is created by those chain threes we made, that little pico, slip stitch through that peak and through that chain, chain one more, and then slip stitch back into the same stitch that's the top of that treble crochet on your motif A, the one you're still working on. So now you've actually attached at one point. We're going to attach at two points for each motif running through column A or column 1. So we're going to slip stitch now all the way across these few stitches all the way back up to our next treble crochet. When you've slip stitched into the top of the next treble crochet, chain one, pick up that other motif, spin it around, make sure it hasn't twisted on you because it's probably dangling and turning around. So take a look at your join and twist it until you feel that A, your motif is facing upright and B, that join doesn't look very twisted. Then you're going to find the peak right next to it and slip stitch to join that one as well. So pull your yarn right back through both, chain one more to complete your little pico, and then you're going to slip stitch back into the same stitch that's the top of that treble crochet. And you have officially joined two motifs together. So if you lay them down, they are completely joined at their two adjacent little treble crochets, or the two adjacent points, and you're going to join all six in this manner all the way up. In order to complete the motif, motif A, that you're currently working on, just continue with the rest of row five the way you did it for the first motif. So you slip stitch into every single stitch. When you get to the top of a treble crochet, you're going to slip stitch into the treble crochet, like this, chain three, that creates our little pico, slip stitch back into the same stitch, and continue slip stitching. Take your time. Don't make your slip stitches very tight. You want this to lay nice and flat. And then you can go ahead, finish this motif. Once you get all the way back around to the beginning, you slip stitch in the same slip stitch to join, fasten off, weave in your tail, and start another motif. Get all the way up to row four, and then you're going to begin row five, and you're going to join to this motif. It'll be these two bottom ones. It's pretty easy to see where to join as you lay it out. Make sure that your motifs are always facing upright and you want to have six in a row all attached and then we'll move on to column two. Column A is finished when you have attached all six in column A at those little two points. So you just kind of keep making them and attaching them until you have six in a row. Then you can start column B. In column B is the first one of column B is easy. Instead of attaching it directly atop, you're attaching it to the two side points. So it's the exact same kind of attachment. 
But things change a little bit when we move into the next few motifs for column B. And I'm going to just demonstrate that now. So instead of joining it just two places, we're going to be joining it four. These two, and then the adjacent two to the, the motif that sits next to it. So this is motif A. Motif A is always the motif that you're working on. You're going to finish off rows one through four and start row five, just like you did with the rest of them. Get to the top of your first treble crochet, chain one. You're going to flip your thing around so that you're joining as you go in whatever direction works for you, but I find working towards me helps. You're going to do the first two joins like you would normally to the two that sit directly above it. So like if you're working in straight lines, chain one more, slip stitch, and then work your way over to the next treble crochet and join the adjoining point. All right, most of you can probably see where we're going now. We've joined motif A, which is always the motif you're currently building, to motif B. Motif B usually sits directly above it, so that's the one that you join to first. But now we need to join to motif C, and that will always be the motif that sort of sits next to it. So when you're joining a motif to more than one, you've got to remember that instead of just two points, now you have one, two, three, four points. So same thing, no change, you just get around to the very next treble crochet, slip stitch into it, chain one, make sure you pick up the very next point on the adjacent motif, slip stitch to join them, chain one more, back into the top of the treble crochet that completes that little pico, and then you slip stitch around to the very next treble crochet and join the second set of, or the fourth set I should say, of uh, points. So four sets of points you're joining now, two for each motif. So better I am back to the treble crochet, I chain one, make sure I'm grabbing the right point, there it is here, right through that point, slip stitch to join, chain one more, back into the top of that treble crochet, and then it's just the same thing. So you slip stitch around, make sure you put a pico in the top of every treble crochet, and then you can go ahead and connect the rest of the motifs in the rest, the rest of column B, or column two. So you should have 12 motifs joined by the end of column two. Once you've finished attaching all of your motifs, I highly recommend that you give it a blocking. You can steam block it or wet block it, whichever you prefer. Just make sure that it's dried completely before you give it away or use it. The blocking will help loosen up any of your stitches if you have any warping whatsoever, and it'll also make sure that all of your little points lie down nice and flat. And now you're all ready to do some spring decorating of your own. If you would like a written copy of our spring flower table runner pattern, you will find it for sale in our Etsy shop, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. And a big thank you to everyone who has popped in recently and done some shopping. We really appreciate your support. And that's it! Thank you so much for tuning in this week and making this little table runner along with us. And we will see you soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week! Bye everybody!